yes it's a school room a german school room but not the kind you're thinking about there are no youngsters here learning a b c s this is not a school for kids meet a freshman class these nazi tools are learning how to be spies take a closer look you may be meeting some of them in america because that's where many of them are going when they graduate when they become ace espionage agents they don't look so dangerous do they no don't kid yourself their weapons aren't the usual weapons of war guns and knives and bombs they have a better weapon you yes we mean you americans see they've got you pegged already why because you are going to make their work easy you are going to talk and they're going to listen you'll leave documents around where they can find them oh you'll play ball all right you trust anybody and tell secrets you're careless and you talk too damned much <laughs> sure they're laughing at you but if you think they're laughing now wait till they get to america and you really make a fool out of yourself Watch. Act up. Well, here's the teacher. Good morning. Hello. So, a complete attendance. That is good. Excellent. We have much to accomplish. Take your seats. Today again we discuss a familiar topic, American stupidity. You're tired of the subject, perhaps? Tired? No, no, always. May they continue to be so stupid. Always? Yeah. Rely on it. A few clever Yanks, yes. Very few. The majority of Americans have not had the advantage of severe discipline. They are soft and as a consequence given to emotional excesses of friendship and trust. Here's an incident to illustrate how our enemies talk, trust, and are criminally careless. All favorite American diversions. Three young men, an advanced detail from the same division headquarters were en route to an American port of embarkation. Bill, Bob, and Jack. <coughs> Perfect apple-cheeked examples of American manhood. Jack is having some difficulty with tobacco. What a pity. He's so young. Make your eyes smart, son? Kind of stuffy in here. Don't let him kid you, mister. He's train sick. What a hell of a sailor you make. Said it was kind of stuffy, didn't I? I'll be all right next week. Oh, yeah? Well, keep this in mind. They haven't gotten around to paving the ocean yet. We don't want to wet nurse you all the way to... Uh, are you boys going overseas? We didn't say so. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. That's okay. You got it. Let's go. Very wise, Bill. Never talk to strangers. That man might have been a German agent. But you're wrong. Here is the agent of the Reich. An excellent listener, too. He heard everything through this little vent. Information of troops going overseas. Incomplete? Yes. But the boys are becoming more cooperative. Chicago, all passengers change. Right. Pay attention, please. Dad, remember I named two flowers, roses and violets? Well, it's violets on Tuesday the 7th. You could come down by bus the day before. It's only a five-hour ride, and we could spend the whole afternoon together. Oh, that's swell. All right, then, it's noon at the Harbor House. And remember, violets. Goodbye, Dad. Violets, roses, horticulture. Nothing that simple, my friends. Young Jack and his father have a secret code. 
He wanted to tell his fond parent where he was going, without revealing military information, of course. Good Americans never do that, do they? Didn't you charge me too much on that call operator? Well, that's the rate to go for it. I forgot about the tax. Sorry. What an ingenious Stumkopf our Jack is. What a childish attempt to obey security regulations. Galeport, was it? <laughs> I just said five hours ride to Violets. My dear stupid boy, even an ape could answer that. By Violets, you meant Port Haven. That's where the convoy says from. Already we knew where and when. Next Tuesday, huh, Jack? <laughs> so you are thirsty for the blood of that convoy. You find it amusing? Do not be over enthusiastic. Information was good, but insufficient. Hubert's are costly. We do not risk them unless our information is complete, exact. But the Americans will supply us with that. All you have to do is keep your eyes and ears open. They are most obliging people. And very devout, too. Also thick-headed. Instead of the state, they worship God. This simple little church is located in the town of Port Haven, important to us for other reasons besides prayers. Convoys, for example. Recall? Now here's that young idiot, Bob. See the glow of pride on his healthy face. Religion did that. But if he wanted to get closer to his Lord, he is a much quicker way. He's lonesome. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome, sir. Did you enjoy the sermon? Yes, sir, I did. It's the first time I've heard your minister. He was great. I'm a stranger in town. Yes, I guessed as much. One gets to know most of the faces around here. Uh, coming my way? Well, I don't know, sir. I'm, I'm heading downtown to the Harbor House. And uh, I don't know which bus to take. Well, the same one as mine. Uh, we catch it right here at this corner. Oh. Parsons, Nebraska? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, can you imagine that? My grandson's stationed there, too. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, maybe you know him. Harry Gilpin. Gilpin? Gilpin? Oh, I'm afraid not. Parsons is a pretty big place. 30,000 men. Ooh, that big? Uh -huh. Well, then it wouldn't be likely you knew Harry. I wish you had, though. Oh, he's a fine boy. Uh, learning to be an aerial gunner. You'd like him. Aerial gunner? Yeah. Are you sure? Well, Parsons is armored. Well, it's someplace in Nebraska. Of course, I could be mistaken. Wait a minute, I've got Harry's letter right here. Hold it. Don't you think you're talking quite a bit? Do you know this man? Uh, no, sir, but uh, I didn't say anything. Oh, yes, you did. But I'm not discussing military regulations in public. Well, I hope there's no trouble. I'm sorry, sir, this is a military matter and doesn't concern you. The sergeant and I are going to talk this thing over. Uh, too bad. Just when you were giving us such interesting information, Robert. Doctor's ready now, Captain. Will you go in, please? Danke schön. Did the uniform deceive you? It deceived young Bob. He never imagined that some of Germany's best servants hide behind uniforms or an innocent doctor's office. A large belly ache for American security. Yeah? Moffat, you'd have died laughing at this stupid soldier. I told him he'd be caught martial if he didn't tell me everything. He thought it was a little irregular, but to avoid trouble, he talked. <laughs> grocery, grocery! He must have talked himself black in the face. <laughs> Such news. The 300th Armored is moving out of Parsons by motor convoy and train. And these astonishing new tank destroyers he mentions. Incredible. So, this division embarks here Tuesday. Do we know the destination yet? The number of transports and the route? Oh, be patient. He couldn't give me all that. 
But he's stopping at the Harbor House with two others who may be better informed. We have our friends at the Harbor House too, eh, Marford? Pay strict attention, please. We are going upstairs now in search of more facts. Here they are, the three little suckers, and how they grow with information. Jack, Bob, and Bill. Young Jack is daydreaming about tomorrow when his dear father arrives to pick violets, remember? Poor Bob is so worried. He wonders if the captain will report him for talking carelessly on the motor bus. <laughs> if he only knew. And let us not overlook our master sergeant, Master Willie. He's writing to a whack private in England, one of his many girls, to tell her that he's going to be there himself soon. But the census would not allow that. They examine all letters and envelopes under a strong light. Too bad. A date with Nancy could have been so nice. But wait. So, you need another stamp bill? No matter, get one downstairs. Clever boy, yeah? I think I'll work this town over. You guys want to come? No. How about you, Jack? Hit a few night spots, catch a show, maybe pick something up. They haven't rationed dames yet, you know. No, thanks. I'm going to turn in early. You go ahead. You do better alone anyhow. <laughs> you can say that again. Suckers. Got an airmail stamp? Sure thing, soldier. Yes, sir. I want to send a telegram. Warm, isn't it? Yeah, plenty. And dull. Say, uh, where does a guy find some sport in this town? Why, there's Barney's. Got a band and a floor show if you like it hot. Yeah? Uh, how about Dane's? That's Barney's specialty. Across the street about two blocks down. Much obliged. Straight wire. Put it on my bill. Right away, sir. Enough for you, Willie? Good. Be too straight. Sit 
done. Drink up. This is what you want, isn't it? Drink all you want. Get mellow. Relax. Get careless. Three should do it. You can shove off. You're not sitting in glue. Okay, make a fool out of yourself. Maybe I'll be seeing you one of these days. Not too soon, I hope. 